Hello guys, we're going to be talking about direct and inverse proportion and um, the first thing we need to know is this constant um, sign here which we call the proportional constant or constant of proportionality. Um, in this case, for example, A is directly proportional to B. This is how you write it. It looks like a fish sign and you have to write it as an equation, which is A equals KB. The K is the constant of proportionality. Um, so say, for example, you have something like this, where you have A to be given as 10, and you have B to be given as 2, and you are asked to fill in this table. What you want to do, if I quickly grab my pen from here, is to try and find how this relates to each other. So direct proportion is usually like this, which means as one value increases, the other increases, or as one value decreases, the, un the other decreases. So if we replace this A with the number 10, and we replace this B with the number 2, what could K be? This K, if we have to divide both sides by 2 to get our K, the K would be 5. So our constant of proportionality is 5. So knowing that k is 5, k equals 5, if I want to fill this up, I need to also replace my b with a 5. So I'm going to take a new slide quickly, and we're going to rewrite this uh, diagram or redraw this diagram. So if we go put a new slide on there, and I'll just bring this up again. So, if I draw that table again and put my A there and my B here, in the first table we had A as 10 and B as 2. Just double checking. Yes, and then we have to fill in the bit for this 5 and fill in the bit for the 20. So, if I put 20 there. So, we already know K is 5 when we try to use this equation for direct proportion, KB. Now, if B is 5, and we know our K is 5, what would A be? Obviously, A would be 25, because we do 5 times 5. So in here, we've got to fill it as 25. We're going to fill the other part. Writing our equation again, a direct proportion equation, in this case, we don't know what B is. We know A is 20. Our K is 5, but we need to find what B could be. From all indications, our B will be 4 because we divide both sides by 5, so our B is 4. So that's that table field for direct proportion. The second one we will quickly look at is the inverse proportion. If you look at this bit here, this inverse proportion a is inversely proportional to B. So because it's inversely proportional, you have 1 over B with your sign there. To write it as an equation, the 1 becomes a K, which is a constant of proportionality. Now we're going to have to complete this table, so I'm going to redraw this table in a new slide. Hopefully we can then get it done on the new slide. Okay, so I'm going to put this here now, and I'm going to draw this new table, 20 and 10 on there. So we draw 20 on there, 10 there, A here, B here. Now remember we're dealing with inverse proportion, so here A equals K over B in this case. Now, uh, the second part of the table, we've got 5 on top and 100 at the bottom. So we've got 5 there, 100 here, and we are asked to fill, complete the table. Now, in this case, we need to know what K is. They've given us these two values. When A is 20, so we're going to replace this A here with 20, and our K is there, and our B is 10. What could K be? From all indications, our k will be 200 because we multiply both sides by 10, so k equals 200. Okay. Now, 
if we know a is 5 and k is 200, what could b be to fill in this bit here? Now, from all indications here, we know 5b is 200 because you just multiply both sides and by b to get rid of uh, b on this side. Now you divide both sides by 5 and your b will be 40. So we've got to put 14 in, in here. The next bit is this bit here. I'm going to use a different color pen. We know A in this two that we've done, but in this case, we'll ask to fill for A. So we don't know what A is, but we do know that our K is 200. As we've done it here already, our K is 200. And the B given is 100. So if you divide that, your A will be 2. So we've got to put 2 in here. And so that's that table completed. The next bit we want to do is this exam question here. It says M is directly proportional to L to the cube of L. So if we were to write this as an equation, M becomes K and the cube of L. Now this is direct proportion because it says it's on there. It says when L is 2, so if we replace the L with a 2 and put a cube there, it says M is 160. Now we've got to work out what K could be. Now in this case, 160 becomes 8K because 2 cubed is 8. We have 8K. If we divide both sides by 8, our K becomes 20. So we know what the k is. We're asked to find the value of m when l is 3. So m equals, we know our k is 20. And now we've been told that the l is 3. So I'm going to put times 3 cubed. Remember, it's directly proportional to l cubed. So our m becomes 20 times 27. So therefore, your M becomes 540. Now, this is a real GCSE exam question, and this is what you should be getting when you work that out. The next exam question we're going to practice is this one here. It says F is inversely proportional. So when it says inversely proportional, you know it's talking about you having one over the, the, the square of x in this case, so I'm going to put that there. If I was to write this as an equation, it becomes f equals k over x squared. And you can clearly see when we wrote it up here, it's still the same thing. So, it says when f is not 0 0.8, when f is not 0 0.8, your k we don't know yet. It says your x is 5. So 5 squared. And to find k, you multiply 5 squared, which is 25. And you multiply that by not 0.8. So I quickly do 25 times not 0.8. And you should have k to be 20. So I'm going to put 20 there. We know what our constant of proportionality is now. Now, it says find the formula for f in terms of k. So, to write the formula, I'm just going to write f equals 20 over x squared. This will be the formula. Like I said, this is a proper GCSE question. Now, the second question says, what are the positive value of x when f is 320? Now, if I was to replace this f with 320, equals 20 over x squared. Now, remember, to be able to work this out, I'll take a new slide so you can see how this is uh, done. So, I'm going to rewrite what I have here in the new slide. 320 equals 20 over x squared. So, it's 320 equals 20 over x squared. 
Oh, that's what we have there. Let's check. Yes. So this becomes 320 x squared equals 20. Obviously, your x squared becomes 20 over 320. And your x squared becomes 1 over 16. Alright, because if you divide by you get 1 over 16. And of course, the square root of your x squared gives you 1x. And it gives the square root of this, which is 1 over 16. Remember, this will be plus or minus because the square root of So your x is going to be, remember the question said the positive value of x. So x, the square root here, you're going to have 1 over 4, the positive value. We don't want the negative one. So your x should be 1 over 4. All right? And if you want to check if that's correct, if you have 1 over 4 squared, you're going to have 1 over 16. And if you do 20 divided by uh, 1 over 16, you should be having the accurate number we've got there. Okay? And we can actually check that out, can't we? Um, let's just check that out just to be on the safe side. Um, so we have x squared, which is going to be 1 over 16, because our x was 1 over 4. And... We want to do 20 divided by that value. So we're going to do 20 divided by 1 over 16. Remember your KFC, guys. So we keep the first fraction, which is 20. And as a fraction, you write it over 1. You flip the second one, and you change the divide to times. Now, by the time you have to do your 20 times 16, you should be getting 320. So that's perfectly correct. So um, that was just a check. So if I write that down, just check the answer. Um, yeah, so x, the positive value, should be 1 over 4 as your answer. Like I said, this